Hey everyone, it's Amy from the Denials and Documentation Compliance Department, and I'm back with this week's edition of The Right Way Wednesday. So if you tuned in last week, you would have heard Melinda and Seth talk about point of service documentation. They gave us very helpful hints and things to think about when documenting while treating, and how this is super beneficial, and how it increases efficiency as well as accuracy of our documentation. So today I'm going to continue this discussion of point of service documentation and how this might actually be helpful with some of the denials that Diane, Nicole, and myself have been seeing frequently in the denials department. So lately we've seen numerous denials related to, and this is what they say, records do not contain documentation to support the coding criteria for code build on date of service. So this is usually in reference to CPT code 97530, therapeutic activities. So um, the first thing we want to do is look to see what's written on the daily note for the date and the CPT code in question. And we've been finding that the therapist has written something like, therapist progress note completed, see note for details, or UPOC completed this date, Goals updated appropriately. See UPOC for additional information. Now, when we're billing for 97530, we must bill for services provided as defined by our LCD. So, one of the specific LCDs says that, and I'm going to read because I don't have the LCD um, memorized quite yet, but it says, Therapeutic activities are considered reasonable and necessary for patients needing a broad range of rehabilitative techniques that involves movement. This procedure involves the use of functional activities such as bending, lifting, carrying, reaching, catching, transfers, and overhead activities to restore functional performance in a progressive manner. The activities are usually directed at a loss or restriction of mobility, strength, balance, or coordination. They require the skills of the therapist to design the activities to address a specific functional need of the patient and to instruct the patient in performance of, this, of these activities. So to bill for therapeutic activities, we must actually provide functional activities that are designed to restore a specific performance and we must provide instruction during these tasks. So if we go back to the documentation in the denial for the daily wrote, as written by the therapist on the date in question, the reviewer is correct, okay? Billing for this code was not supported because according to the daily note, all we did was bill for the progress, the therapist progress note or the UPOC, okay? Now, we all know that completing a progress note or a UPOC takes a lot of time, okay? We understand this. We need to address multiple components that shows our skill and what we have already provided and what we plan to continue to provide and addressing all these components take time. Okay, we get it. We need to address all the short-term goals. We need to update, um, upgrade, downgrade DC as appropriate. Um, we need to complete updated standardized tests. We need to talk about caregiver, caregiver education that we've provided, okay, et cetera. Um, and we wanna get credit for the time that we've spent completing a comprehensive progress note or UPOC. So how can we do this? Okay, well, by completing point of service documentation, we can address all of the components on the progress note while appropriately providing treatment and therefore billing of our services. So as a part of the progress note or UPOC, we need to update all treatment goals, right? Okay, well, we do this while we're doing a treatment session anyway, right? If you have a gate goal, for example, you're going to provide instruction and cues as necessary while the patient ambulates. During your treatment session, while you're billing under CPT code 97116, you're going to also assess the resident's progress towards the already established short-term goal. And on your therapist progress note, or UPOC, you're gonna document this progress, okay? You're gonna to want to involve the patient and or the caregiver during this assessment, providing education as, where, as to where the patient was upon evaluation, and then regarding his or her progress made until now, um, you can talk about the different cues provided during ambulation, say to increase the step length or to sustain an upright posture during, uh, during walking, um, whatever. But all of this education can be documented within the progress note 
and can also be billed under CPT code 97116 as this is all incorporated under gate training. So we're essentially killing two birds with one stone, right? We're providing treatment and we're also completing our weekly or progress report. So when writing the daily treatment note, uh, we will need to document what we provided during the session like we normally do. This is also where we'll note the cues facilitated and the education implemented during the session. Okay, this is how billing for the CPT code is supported. Okay, so by only stating that the progress note was completed um, doesn't support billing for the code and so therefore it's at really a, a, a big risk for denial. So last week, like I said, Melinda and Seth discussed the benefits of point of service documentation to maximize our efficiency and our accuracy, but, but utilizing point of service documentation can also support our billing um, if done correctly and can therefore decrease our risk of denial, actually. So I hope this information has been helpful for you. Um, if you have any questions related to this video or if you have any other questions about documentation, please feel free to reach out to us. Um, you can put in a comment here um, on the Facebook page um, or you can email us at denials at heritage-healthcare.com or documentation at healthpro-rehab.com. So thank you so much for joining me with today's The Right Right Wednesday and stay tuned for next week's edition. Have a great day.